Welcome back. So today we're gonna do something a little bit different. So I have a Prisha Mini that I use for all of my 3D printing, but taking the USB stick back and forth from my printer to my laptop whenever I wanna upload G code can be kind of a hassle. And one possible and probably the most popular solution is using Octoprint, which is a web-based interface for your 3D printer that you can access through a Raspberry Pi server. But I haven't been able to find a Pi anywhere, at least not for any reasonable price. So uh, when I was looking into alternatives, I ended up coming across an app called Octo4a that lets you run an instance of Octoprint on an Android phone which also gives you access to the phone's built-in camera for things like remotely monitoring your prints and recording time lapses, as opposed to hooking up a webcam or Raspberry Pi cam to a Pi itself. I'm gonna be using the Pixel 6 along with this USB-C hub that has power delivery along with USB-A ports so I can connect to my printer and this micro USB to USB-A cable that works with the Prusa Mini. You can and definitely should use an older phone to run a permanent instance of Octoprint on. It's kind of, not really worth it to use a brand new flagship, but this is what I have on hand right now to test this out. If it works, I'll definitely be swapping it for something else later. And those three things are pretty much all you need if you just wanna send files and remotely start prints. But if you wanna take advantage of that built-in camera, you'll need some way to hold your phone up with the camera facing the print bed. So I grabbed this extra magic arm and a clamp for one end and a phone holder for the other end. And that's all the physical components, like hardware you need for this. Next, we just have to set up the actual Octoprint itself. Now getting this working is fairly straightforward. You just need to head over to the GitHub repo, which I'll link down below the like button. Scroll down to the releases page, download the APK for the app and install it. And just a bit of warning here before you move on. This is technically side loading since you're not installing this app directly from the Google Play Store, you're just using the APK file and installing it yourself. Usually when you download an app, Google verifies to an extent that it's not gonna do anything malicious to your phone or cause any harm. But since we're just downloading this file and installing it ourselves, we're not gonna have that verification step. Personally, I'm gonna trust Octa4a since it is open source and all of the code is available on GitHub to look through. But be sure to do this at your own discretion and keep it in mind for future APKs that you might wanna sideload on your own. Also, since you're trying to install an app that isn't originating from the Play Store, the phone knows this, so it's gonna either make you enable third-party installs or it's gonna make sure you confirm that you're like 100% certain and wanna move forward with this install before it actually installs the app on your phone. But that's just for the Android app itself. Once that's installed, we can open it up and actually get to installing Octoprint which takes a few minutes and once that's done, there are a few things we need to check in the settings before it's actually ready to go. First up at the top, we need to download some plugin extras. And these are just some extra files that plugins like Octolops need when they get installed to your Octoprint instance. So if you don't download these now, you'll run into some issues later down the line. And down in camera settings, I'm just gonna go the highest resolution possible, just because I can. But I will limit the FPS to 15, which should be plenty for a good view to check up on prints and it won't use much bandwidth or processing power to do. I might even lower this to 10, depending on how it looks when I start printing, since I just want to be able to quickly check in on prints, nothing serious, and this quality won't affect the actual time lapses that get recorded, it's just for the live stream. And that takes care of all the setup you need to do on your phone, so now we can just take the IP address that's in the app to any browser on a computer, and we can remotely log into the Octoprint instance. And from here, it's exactly like any other Octoprint setup, we just have to make a login and go through a few configuration steps. And since I plan on using the Pixels camera to actually make time lapses of my prints, we'll need to download the Octolapse plugin before we actually do any printing. For that, you can just go up to settings, plugin manager, get more, and search for Octolapse. Once that's installed, you have a bunch of different options for things like where the printer stops for the photo and what the animation looks like in the end. But that's pretty much it for the software. Now we can get to actually putting the pieces together and getting our prints going. So I have the friction arm clamped to my printer table with Pixel 6 being held by this phone clamp. And plugged into the phone, I have the USB-C hub with a USB-C cable to charge the phone while it runs and a micro USB cable running back to the printer. Once it's all set up, you can open the Octo4a app on your phone and then go to any web browser to log into the Octoprint instance using that same IP address from earlier. From there, I can just slice a file like I usually would in Prusa Slicer and take that G code and upload it directly to the printer using that web interface. And before I actually start the print, I just wanna make sure that Octolapse is enabled real quick and check the snapshot plan for the smart trigger. 
You can change these to get a different effect in the final time lapse, and all it really does is change the points in your print where the printer will pause for a photo. But once that's all set up, I'll just go ahead and start the print. So now the printer's gonna do its usual bed leveling and heating procedure, but once it starts printing, it'll stop at those predetermined points depending on the effect that you choose and trigger a photo from the camera. So this was the first time lapse I got, and I thought it looked good given that it was the first setup of this entire test, but I decided that we could probably get something better. So I added significantly more light and I also changed the camera angle so we, the print itself would fill up more of the frame, which I think looks pretty solid. I mean, I do plan on tweaking the setup over time to see if I can get some better results, maybe mess with the lighting a little bit more, add some color, see how it looks. But I personally wouldn't use this for longer prints. I mean, I was testing this with 20 to 30 minute prints and the phone was getting pretty warm as it is. And I found that if your phone ever went to sleep, or it died, the print just paused where it was at that moment. So for longer prints, you'd have to disable pretty much every battery saver or screen timeout setting that it has. Since these phones are pretty much designed to conserve battery and not do anything when they don't need to, and not run consistently for hours at a time. Overall, this is a great way to give new life to older Android phones. But personally, I think I'm gonna keep looking for a Raspberry Pi that I can leave dedicated to the printer, maybe add an enclosure and actually attach it to the frame itself. But in the meantime, this is definitely a great way to get shorter time lapses of those really short prints that I might just wanna have for fun. But thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe down below for more videos about tech, cameras, and making. Here's a video about 3D scanning with your iPhone, and here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.